we're going to talk to Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. What would you hi. like to talk about today? Hi. Um, hi. Um, hi. I just wanted to talk about like my own experience of, and how I, I saw God in creation before I read the Bible, like when I was 12. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I grew up in a secular, a secular home mm-hmm. and um, in California. Mm-hmm. And my dad was an atheist, and so I sought God completely on my own. And so w- when I look at the creation, it's kind of like when you're into architecture, and you look at a building, and you're like, okay, that one's a Victorian, that one's Art Deco, that one's Gothic. There's certain things that, you know, you look for that are consistent, that mm-hmm. make you go, oh, okay, that's that person's creation. So I, I feel that way with God, because like, under a microscope, you will see things that you'll see from a telescope so like you'll see something very very tiny and you also see it very very huge yes michelle can i ask a question how do i tell the difference between a victorian style house and a cape cod style house um different aspects of it are the same sure but i would need to like there's certain in, in order for me to say, hey, this is a Cape Cod, I would point to things about that I've seen in other Cape Cod houses. And to say this is a Vic- Victorian, I would point to things I've seen in other Victorian houses that it has this particular style. And we know that when we go to identify a new house, we can say, that one looks like it's a little bit of a mix between Victorian and Cape Cod. What were they thinking? And we can point to that because we have other reference points, right? <laughs> yes. Right? I was going to yeah. get to my hang reference on, point. Hang on. If, you, if I may. How many, okay. Hang on. How many universes do we have? Uh, well, we have a bunch of galaxies, so I think we could consider them universes if we wanted no, to. No, that's not what universe means, and that's only... not, no, that's not what universe means, and that's not what, how science works. You don't just get to, yeah, oh, but do you think that there's, God is only a God of this galaxy? <laughs> No, not at all. Okay, just, okay, then let's not divide it up into galaxies, because now we would be like people. How many universes do you have to explore? This is ours? Yeah, just the one, right? So that means you have nothing to compare it to, which means there is no way possible for you to continue on your argument to say that there are things about this universe that point you towards God because you have nothing to compare it to. Show me a universe that was created by a God and one that wasn't so I can contrast them. But you can't do that because we have one. So there's no way it is impossible for you to make your argument. Now, I'm going to stop. And okay, uh, I'm going to, you know, if you want to try... I won't have to say anything else, and Shannon will have fun. Go ahead, Michelle. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm not trying to like bully you into believing anything. I'm just sharing my own experience and my oh, own. Of course. Thoughts. Yeah. No. No. That no, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, my question to you would be similar to Matt's. Like, what's your referential point? Because okay. you're saying that I've done a comparison. So I've looked at X things, and you're using architecture as an example. And I know that I can perceive design and architecture because I have a, a point of reference. What is your point of reference external to the universe to indicate design? Uh, I don't know if uh, it's necessarily something outside because it's the natural world that I'm looking at. So like, frat- so would you just not be saying that the natural world has some sort of uniformity that I can perceive? And wouldn't that to be yeah, expected? Yeah, like the the re- the repeating of the golden ratio in creation whether it be well you're referring to it as creation so you're saying the repeating of the golden ratio so what you're saying to me like this is the this is the way that i would perceive what you're perceiving just to give you a juxtaposition of two of us perceiving the same things and looking at them from a different perspective you're saying i see consistent patterns and thus because i see consistent patterns that's evidence that those patterns were placed there for some reason i don't know why and i'm saying that if the universe operates using a specific set of rules, we would anticipate seeing specific patterns. And that's evidence of nothing other than the physical universe operates on a given set of rules. Does my position okay. not um, explain the phenomena that you're describing? Well, it, personally, it doesn't for me because Why not? when I see a snowflake, which you can't see, a snowflake unless you catch it really quickly and it's very, very cold out to see the intricate design. Mm -hmm. And also you see those things. 
I, for me, no, if, we're, you're talking naked eye then. I'm, looking, I'm talking C as in be able to like look at. So you could see a snowflake, for example, under a microscope. And like you said, if you catch it very quickly. So that doesn't negate my point, which is that, that that's a form of pattern. And given the physical constraints within the systems, the physical systems that in, exist within the universe, like that's why physics exists as, as a field of study, we would anticipate that mm. things would form into patterns that we would perceive, especially since we're kind of pattern recognition machines, recognition machines, given the physical constraints of the universe. So seeing patterns and seeing things that form into patterns is something we would anticipate given the limitations of and constraints of physical systems. So seeing patterns isn't something that's special. It doesn't deviate from what we anticipate. In fact, it is what we would anticipate knowing what we know about how the universe operates. So what about that entails that there is something special outside of the universe causing that to happen? Well, for me, I don't think something beautiful and intricate and something that um, is so prevalent is is going to just occur on its own. It, and Why? It actually when for what conceivable reason would it not occur on its own? And how does it not conforming to the constraints of the physical system of the universe we exist within entail that it exists on its own as opposed to as an emergent property of the universe that we see given the regulations that we see and the existing material within the universe and how it has has to form and reform given you those physical so constraints. <laughs> I do talk very fast. And, I'm and sorry. if you and if you would stop trying to make your point, you would have heard it. No, I I'm hearing it, but I'm not allowed to make my point either. So no, I'm so I'll be quiet. For what a load of shit! What a, what a load of shit! The fact that Shannon was addressing something, how could you possibly suggest that you're not being allowed to make your point? I talked over her once. To be she's fair, it's okay. She she's saying it. Yeah. Thank you, um, Shannon. Is that your That's name? Okay. Shannon? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll be quiet for a moment so you can. Oh, okay. So for me, we're in we're in constant like entropy, which is like dissolving into non order. So when I see something that is in such not just in order but in beauty that like mm -hmm. blows my mind, that that for me just it's like common sense to me. So that's why I obviously. You're, we're all human, so we have things in common. So when we look at something, that it just kind of bugs me that we don't see the same thing sometimes. Yes, and it bugs me too, because you, you are looking at the world yeah. and saying, I just can't believe that that could happen without a God. And I'm looking at the world saying, hey, can that happen without a God? I have no way of knowing. What reason do I have to believe that there's a God in the first place? I don't have one. You have a bias that you have already admitted to. You will not accept that something beautiful like that could happen without a designer. That is a flaw in your thinking because you're assuming something that you cannot and have not demonstrated. And you are using that to reach the very conclusion that you were biased towards from the beginning. Because the first words out of your mouth after talking about your dad being an atheist was that you sought out God, not that you sought out the truth. Yeah, I sought out God for answers because yeah. so, I saw that he existed in my own reasoning. In your own head. You know what I'm saying? Of course yeah. I wanted the truth no that was seek, seeking was the answer to I don't, why I don't believe that why, I don't believe why? that you went looking for the truth because if you go look for the truth, you don't begin with an assumption. You don't begin with the assumption that something beautiful can't I'm, happen unless there's a designer. I'm 12 years old, so I can't I'm sorry that I don't live up to your expectations, but when I was 12 years old, I sought God for answers and, it, and I, it, I'm sorry that you haven't grown since 12 on this subject. I have, I definitely have. Okay, and then give us something beyond what the 12 year old you came up with. That's what we need. Okay. I mean, you're, I know that you like to be mean, but I'm not going to take offense. I, no, no, no. Stop. How dare you suggest that I like to be mean or that I'm being mean? What I'm trying to be is forthright. I'm trying to not waste all the other callers' time. I'm trying to get to a point where we can make some sort of determination. And I gave you the way out at the beginning because you acknowledged that you reached a conclusion about the universe that is wholly unjustified because your analogy was, hey, here's something I can determine because I've seen other things like it. And you have one universe. 
how dare you accuse me of being mean for just holding your feet to the fire? I'm not, I'm not saying anything to offend you. I just would like to at least. I don't care if you're offending me or not. You said, I like to be mean. That's a fucking lie. I'm sorry. I know. Okay. I'm sorry. Then, you, fine. Can I please finish because quantum physics, I'm into that too. I like science. So that's Do you have a degree in any relevant field relevant to quantum physics? I'm going to bet no. I'll bet every dollar in my wallet. No. Okay, can I, can I say what I wanted to say, please? Are you going to answer the question? They say... Am Are you going to answer the question? From, I, you still haven't let me make my point yet. Are I, you going to answer the question? Went off on something. Are you going to answer the question? Can you repeat it? I'm sorry, I didn't know. Do you have a degree in a field relevant to quantum mechanics? Of course not. Of I'm course not. Yes, which is why I was willing to bet everything in my wallet. So why would I sit around and listen to the armchair pontifications of somebody who has no expertise in this field, as opposed to those people who do? I am trying to reason with you from my point of view as to why I see God without... I, 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 we already know why you see God. You wanted to see God, and you won't believe that there's not a God. <laughs> Sorry, what? Well, if I may... When they do, when they do this, the quantum physics, you know, um, experiments, they say without an observer, like when it's. Oh, my fucking God. Please stop, Michelle. Observe it. Do you, I don't want you to embarrass yourself further online. You don't know a thing about quantum mechanics. You don't know any, a thing about the observer. And you have bought into a lot of nonsense to go down a road to claim that there must be a God because there must have been an observer. That has nothing to do with collapsing the quantum ind indeterminacy. You are embarrassing yourself now. I like it does. When I learn about it, personally, when I learn about it, I feel like it does. So, okay. So well, I don't care what your personal understanding is because you are wrong. You are inconsistent with the scientists. And the fact that you are sitting here smugly talking about, well, this is what makes sense to me when I read it, as, as opposed to what the actual scientists say, that's embarrassing as well. That is what the scientists say. That's why I brought no, it. It's not. It's not. You don't. I'll shut up. Go ahead, Shannon. It's okay. Michelle, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I know I, I can sense that this is becoming heightened and I want to bring it down for a sec. And the only, and, and, and specifically because I, I had asked you a question initially that I'm hoping, and I think it would be fruitful um, if, if we're able to get an answer from, and now I gave you my perspective on what explains the perception of beauty and uniformity and pattern recognition in the physical world. And said that essentially like given my perspective that would be an expected outcome and i asked you and i don't believe i got an answer yet if okay you could see how that in and of itself is an adequate answer that doesn't require an outside explanation i was hoping that i might be able to get an answer to that question well i personally don't think that it makes sense because like when i was listening the other day and he, a he asked if you could tell the difference between a dam that was made by a beaver and a dam that was just like made naturally mm -hmm. with a bunch of stick and mud, mud and sticks. Right. See, that's what the difference is. Like, um, if things are in a constant state of of d, you know, entropy, which is so like, what do you think entropy means? So when you say e entropy, like you referenced a snowflake earlier, right? So a snowflake exists, but yeah. will melt. That's a sign of entropy. So are you suggesting that beautiful things wouldn't exist because of entropy, because you've referenced beautiful things or that things that appear designed wouldn't exist because of entropy, because you refer to a snowflake as something that appears designed, even though we know that it doesn't last forever. So it sounds to me as though my explanation holds truer, even given the, cons the, the constraints of entropy, than yours does, because based on yours, the things that you perceive as beautiful wouldn't be subject to entropy, and everything that you've proposed thus far is. No, I feel like it's like when I clean my house. I have to do that on a regular basis because it's constantly falling into entropy that kind of a thing it's constantly oh, that's okay going yeah, you just you just keep going you just keep going with what you feel like and we just keep showing that you don't understand the science one bit and yet you just keep going back to this is what i feel like i feel like this well nobody cares about what you feel like we care about what you can demonstrate 
I think that's demonstrable. When you don't clean your house, it turns into a shit pile. And when you don't keep a snowflake frozen, it melts. But you yet you referred to a snowflake as something that was a demonstration of design and then appealed to entropy as evidence that things were designed. Because otherwise, if they weren't designed, they would be subject to entropy, which means that your defense of your argument is also simultaneously a defeater to your argument, given the examples that you utilized. So your house being cleaned again is you going and cleaning your house. I understand that. A snowflake being formed again is a snowflake being formed again because of the constraints of the physical world that we know and can predict. So because we know and can predict that a snowflake will form and we understand the conditions under which it will form, us perceiving it as beautiful isn't evidence that it was designed. It's evidence of perception. Entropy and the fact that it somehow will no longer exist if it isn't evidence that it was designed any more than it, it. It's actually more further evidence that the physical world creates these systems and our perceptions assign it the attribute of beauty. Now, it, Yes, it's not like beauty is some attribute. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It is subjective entirely. It is experiential. It's not like a flower is in fact beautiful. You perceive it as beautiful. And we have evolutionary naturalistic explanations for why you would see it as beautiful and why a bee might see it as more beautiful than you do. And none of it has anything to do with a God, but you are the prime example of the Dunning-Kruger effect when it comes to science. You don't know what you don't know, but you're really confident that you got it right when you don't. Can I ask you a question? Have you seen that experiment where they put like a little bit of sand and a, and a, a speaker underneath it and they do different decibels of sound and it makes different patterns? Yes. Yes. It's not an experiment. It, but it, it's you can do it. At, demonstration, I Demonstration, mean, yeah. Sure, it's, yes, it's a demonstration of, of sound moving matter. Yes, what's the question? Okay, and, okay, and then, yeah, okay, so that doesn't strike you as really cool that it actually makes... Uh, yeah, it, it is really cool. You know what else is really cool? The golden ratio, 1.61, et cetera. Uh, but none of that speaks to intent. There are patterns in nature because there is regularity, because there is uh, uniformity. Now, there's still chaos in the pattern, which is why those sand things don't always fall exactly the same way. They form the same generalized pattern because that is the shape that audio waves go. Audio waves are, are movements of air and it's physical. It's not, you see, people look at, you're looking at this design as if it's formed by magic. It is absolutely 100% physical. There is a speaker it is vibrating at a particular frequency and that will move and the regularity of that physics will define a pattern. And the differences in the vibration of that speaker will form different patterns. This is absolutely bare bones, basic 101 science. Nothing in it points to a God. That's, that's what I don't understand is for me. I know you don't understand. That's the point. It just says like, oh, you know, it, that would just occur on its own. And especially because it, it is something that occurs in small things and in big things like, the, you know, that, that too just shows me also within, within our own body. But they all adhere to the existing principles that of, of, the, of our, our universe, right? Like the existing constraints and principles of our physical universe are always adhered to. We could, and, and the more we know about the constraints and, and how our universe, op, universe operates, the better chance we have of predicting these types of patterns and knowing how they'll operate I given would, those constraints. And like they don't, it doesn't happen in a vacuum is what we're trying to say, Michelle. It doesn't happen simply because somebody placed it here so that we would think it's pretty which seems to be what you're appealing to is that we wouldn't perceive beauty unless someone placed beauty here for us to perceive it. We perceive it as beautiful because we exist within this world and it's certain things within this world, given the physical constraints of what's capable within this world, we will almost inevitably perceive as beautiful. Now, that being something that's a perception that we have doesn't entail that someone put it there solely for us to perceive which is what we're trying to say to you. But what you're trying to say to us is, no, that was placed there so we could perceive it as beautiful. Otherwise, there's no explanation as for why we think it's beautiful. Can you see that? Does that line of reasoning follow for you? 
I can understand where you guys are coming from, but I just personally don't don't okay. feel like I, it makes sense. So, I, I feel like we are going to have this conversation potentially ad nauseum for a very long degree of time if we don't end it now. I, I appreciate it, and thank you for um, having the conversation with us, but we do have other callers, and it was interesting to have the conversation with you, and I hope it was fruitful for you as well. So thank you, Michelle, and have a good rest of your weekend. See you later. No. Oh, I accidentally hu I hung up on her, but I feel like that would have just been more of the same. <laughs> If yeah, I had it, I, I you know, it. because evidently I like being mean. Oh, you don't like being mean, Matt. I You're just even, more curt than me. I don't <laughs> even try to be mean, but if I ask, if it, look, bring your A game. And if your A game is, but I just feel like when I look at the science that it tells me this, uh, you're not ready. You need to actually go learn some science, not, hey, I read an article. You know, you know, when the, there was all these cool science articles about this God particle thing, and now I want to reference quantum mechanics and quantum physics when I talk about God. Well, do you know anything at all about it? Nope, but that hasn't stopped me yet. And the appeal to beauty always gets me because it's essential. It's like it's such a self-centered view also, essentially saying everything was put here so that we would think it's pretty. What about the shitty stuff? That was put yeah. here too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, There's that some pretty, not beautiful things. We don't think everything's beautiful. That pretty person that you want to kiss, just remember that's the same mouth they puke out of. <laughs> See? And this, oh. this 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 whole thing. So the patterns on the speakers. Oh my gosh, how could that happen? That is that is a failure of the education system to not show someone the basics of physics because mm. it's not it's 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 the same thing we get when you when you say well you can't see air as if we can't demonstrate the truth of For air as if the, if what you see in your eye is is the only thing that that matters. But without those patterns, those patterns, the physical patterns, which are just the rudimentary aspects of physics. Mm. You wouldn't be here to observe it. Yeah. Without, without some level of order, there could be no humans, whether there's a God or not. And so right. what they're doing is they're looking at the order saying, well, that order must have come from a God. How do you know that? Right. I, and and by the way, they go on to believe in this God that uh, is personal. Um, when he calls or she calls or they call, uh, and I, by that I mean the God they believe in, That'll be impressive. Why, do the, why does this God keep hiding himself or herself or themselves? And also in a universe that exists, that we're able to exist within, wouldn't you anticipate a degree of order in order for everything to just not be chaos? Otherwise, like yeah. the degree of order would be something that would be like an inherent property of that system. Otherwise we would exist within chaos. So the fact that we don't exist within chaos is an inherent property. So saying that there is no chaos is just like saying we exist in the system that we exist within, which is proof of nothing other than the fact that we exist within the system that we exist within. So yeah, when you when you look around at nature and say, oh, this nature must have been designed for us. You know what would be better evidence of God? To find us living in a place that wasn't suited for us. <laughs> that makes no, no goddamn so, sense. <laughs> you know, right. hey, I live I live in the vacuum of space, uh, you know, n near a black hole. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I have no explanation for any of it. Yeah, I'm okay, just wandering that'd be, around that'd be a life. miracle. <laughs> <laughs> saying, saying, gosh, it's so surprising that we live on this planet that's suitable temperature wise and with the right chemicals and the right processes and food access and all these other things. Uh, but that's just such a surprise. Can you imagine? We it's exist like, where we can exist. Who would have predicted? <laughs> I can't believe there's tomatoes in that tomato patch. <laughs> we should probably take more calls.